What is going on, everybody? It is me again once again, and want another video for you guys today. As we're going to be taking a look at some Switch Sister stories for the upcoming Splatoon 2 that is releasing for the Nintendo Switch on July 21st. And we apparently got some mysterious stories about the Squid Sisters, Callie and Marie, and we're going to be taking a look at them here in this video today. So, if you guys would like the video, make sure to keep a lookout for more videos related to Splatoon 2 in the near future on my channel. So yeah, let's go ahead and hop right into the Squid Sisters stories right now. So sit back and relax and grab some popcorn and probably grab a soda and whatnot. And let's, and let's enjoy the Squid Sisters stories, starting with Chapter 1 that we're going to be reading right now. So, here we go. One of our researchers monitoring the Squid Sisters intercepted this top secret report from the Inkling world. Let's see now. What? what just what in the world is this? About nine months have passed since the final Splatfest. Twilight lowers its curtains in Inco on Inkopolis. Neon signs paint in the dusk in brilliant shades of green and pink. The Squid Sisters dance on as though driven by the inkling love of battling for turf. Memories such as these linger vividly, etched in my mind, but feel too light and feel too light romance of a long forgotten past. It happened the night this final Splatfest came to an end. The showdown of Callie vs. Marie ended in victory for Marie. But there was no ill will between the two. The girls left, left the studio arm in arm, smiling and laughed, smiling and laughing, as they all, as they have, as they always had. The bond between them will continue unbroken for years to come, or so it seemed at the time. The final Splatfest rocketed the Squid Sisters to new heights of popularity. Callie and Marie went. Went from mere incompetent idols to the biggest stars in, a in Inkling society, seemingly overnight. Their days became their days became filled from da from dawn to dusk, with the duty with the duties of this new on this newfound fame. Callie and Marie still lived in the first apartment they rented upon moving to Inkopolis. and it all happened naturally when they first arrived. Being roommates made adjusting to city life easier. And besides, the two have been ins inspirable since th they were young. But even after their finances had stabilized, and they got used to the bustle of Inkopolis, they never gave a thought to living apart. They were always together, both at work and at play. After releasing their first solo recordings, though, their work began to take them down separate paths more frequently. Callie turned... Callie, true to her outgoing nature, began to make guest appearances on variety shows, filming what often seemed continued late into the night, and many days she didn't return home at all. Maurice received critical praise for her recordings for her recording of Ty Goes Out and became a frequent guest on music shows, in addition to performing live concerts on her own. Up to this point, whether heading out for the day or coming home at night, the two had always been together. Now though their different schedules meant they didn't see each other as often, even on their off days, they spent more and more time apart with each passing day. Marie was home alone, she'd gotten the day off, but with, the, but with theater rehearsals starting up next month, she knew life would be returning quickly to its frantic pace. Chances to relax at home like this would soon become, a few, become few and far between. Knowing work would keep Callie out late, Marie busied herself with, with, the, with the chores that always seemed to pile up and waited for her, for her friend to return home. At times, this, at times like this, Marie's thoughts always seemed to drift. How could Callie truly felt? How had Callie tr truly felt when, this, when the results of the final SWAT fest had been announced? She seemed disappointed, of course, but that was just because she'd lost, right? Or was she actually jealous of my rising popularity? Could she still be holding it against me or all of this after all this time? Just listen to yourself, Marie. Over you're overthinking your this. You know Callie would never would never feel that that way. Maybe this is wor maybe all this is worrying has actually give, given you some sort of superiority com complex. Maybe what in the fu that final splatfest may has made your, you full of yourself. The very idea stunned Marie with a twinge of self-loathing. 
One day, Callie was awakened by a call on her cell phone. It was her manager. The recording session had just had, she had scheduled for the day had been delayed to a, a, accommodate a different performer. Callie found herself a bit thrown, thrown off by this unexpected break, but was determined to make the most of it. Looking around the, the apartment, she saw no sign of Marie, which was odd. She was sure Marie had the day off as well. It was just past 8 in the morning, too early for Marie to have gone shopping. Callie decided to get dressed and head, head out in search of her roommate. Now that, she, now that she thought about it, Marie had seen a bit down lately. Like there was something on her mind she couldn't stop thinking about. Maybe she was just tired. Maybe she was just tired from working too hard, or maybe something had happened to upset her. But worrying about her all day won't fix anything. Callie thought. We work would have barely given her time, given her time to breathe lately. She she'd been feeling a bit lost at sea herself. She made up her mind to find Marie and invite her out for a day of much needed relax relaxation. Callie found, Callie found Marie at a cafe with Crushy Sean. They were seated at a table chatting away. Perhaps it was because, because their hometowns were so close to one another that Callie and Marie both found Sean to make it so easy to talk to. Marie had been a bit shy late when they had to first come to the, to the city after all. Callie couldn't remember the last, the last time she, she'd seen Marie talking so cheerfully with anyone besides her. And she, and she didn't want to spoil their fun. She decided to head back to the apartment alone. Callie was making breakfast when, Cal, when Marie came home. Marie, Marie looked a bit surprised to see Callie and up, about, up and about but greeted her friend in stride. Morning, morning. Same old Marie, thought Callie. When they ate, Callie invited Marie to go shopping and she gladly accepted. How long had it been since they visited since they visited Arowana Mall together in their in their free time? They wandered past new stores and some of some of their old favorites, enjoying the leisure of window shopping. After checking out all the spots they were interested in, they worked up quite an appetite and stopped at a cafe for lunch. Callie ordered a burger. Marie, a slice of pizza. At times like this, Todd. Talk turned naturally to the work they, they'd each been doing lately. They swapped stories of work of workplace happenings and gossiped about their about their coasters. Each was concerned for for the other, but neither wanted but neither wanted to darken the mood by discussing any time the serious. Callie decided decided to mention that she that she'd see Marie at the cafe that morning. Marie seemed a bit seemed a bit caught off guard but began talking about her conversation with Crusty Sean without a missing beat. It seems Sean had recently quit his job at Shrimp Kicks. He'd been, he'd been the store manager there for years, but I long, but I long dreamed, of, dreamed of opening a place of his own. A friend introduced a new opportunity, and Sean went for it. I hope you'll, I hope you'll be okay, Maurice said with some concern. He's always been a bit impulsive. According to Crusty Sean, Annie had been, had been looking for a new gig as well. Truth be told, she'd never been, been much of, of a people any, and moan. and felt like she, she'd given a retail the old college, college try. She'd been keeping busy re recently, helping decorate weapons and ammo nights. The more she did it, the more she felt like Felt like this detail-oriented part-time job suited her perfectly. Do you think? Do you think Eddie and Sheldon? And Kelly blurted out in excitement. No way, Marie said, smiling. Not a chance. It turns out Sheldon was busy himself, planning to expand ammo nights to a second location. He had eye, he, he had his eyes on a prime spot in the part of town that was quickly becoming the new hot hotness of the turf war set. That Sean always has always had a nose for business, the girls agreed. This conversation turned to Captain Cuttlefish, more per, more precisely than that neither of them had seen him lately. It was true that their schedules had kept them too busy to pay him a proper visit, but they hadn't seen his head poke out poke out of his usual manhole recently either. 
There was no real cause for e for alarm now that the Ar that the Arcturians had gone tame, and thinking of the of their grandfather gave them a good laugh. Surely the old ratio would turn up sooner or later. They got lost in conversation, and time slipped away when they noticed the sun beginning to set. Callie and Marie decided to head for home. They remembered just how much fun they always had when they when they went when they were together. Fun didn't quite didn't quite do it justice though. It was more than that, something special that made their hearts feel full. They felt as though they felt as though the clouds had that had been, that had been gathering around them had suddenly blown clear. Marie was packing clothes into her suitcase. She was getting ready for a trip to Calamari County. The trip had come about somewhat suddenly thanks to finding herself with a rare three days off in a row. Rehearsals for her new show were scheduled to start after this, and she knew she wanted to have time off again, of, uh, again for a while. Her manager suggested some R&R would, go would do her good and sent her on her way. Marie had invited Callie to join her, but Callie had an appointment she couldn't miss that day. So Marie decided to head out right away by herself. So not so as not to waste her short, her short vacation, Callie saw her saw her at, off at the station. Promising to catch up with Marie the following day, the train to Calamari County takes three and a half hours from Angopolis. Not an epic not an epic journey in this in the grand scheme of things. Still, without Callie by her side, Marie felt lonely, and the minutes ticked by interminably. Marie hadn't been home in quite, a, in quite some time, and her parents were overjoyed to see her. They sat on the porch together, basking in the sun, and whiling the day away, as Marie told them all about her latest exploits in Inkopolis. She was reminded just how much she loved the place, where she'd grown up. Compared to the hustle and bustle of the city, there not might there might not be much happening, but the flow of time felt different here. It felt right. Marie took in a, took in a deep breath of fresh air, exhaled, and felt her worries and cares float away. From time to time, as she spoke, Marie's parents interjected with questions about Cowie. Each time, Marie replied that yes, of course, Cowie was doing fine. But with each question, she waits inwardly, as if pricked by an unseen needle. We're both... We were both just really busy with our own things, you know? As she struggled to answer her parents' questions in an unbeat fashion, in an upbeat fashion, she was struck by the re realization that she, that she really didn't know how Callie was doing at all. But Callie wouldn't... But Callie would be coming, would be coming the next day, she reminded herself. And one look at her face will quickly dispel the, these nagging feelings of guilt. Marie went to bed and waited for morning to arrive. The next day, f the next day found Marie waiting at the station for Callie's arrival. When the train pulled in, though, Callie wasn't on board. I bet she totally overslept again. Marie thought as she settled in to wait for the next train. Callie was not on the next train, though, nor the one after that. Or the one after that. Night fell, and there were, and there was still no sign of her. Marie called Callie's office and, and was told that she, that she'd headed straight home from work, the the previous evening. She seemed a bit flustered, but I figured she was just in a hurry to get back to Cal Calamari Country. Callie's manager said. Marie tried the tried their apartment several times, but no one picked up. Marie began, began to feel panic rising in her chest. The following morning, Marie cut her trip short and returned to Inkopolis on the first train of the day. She hated to leave her parents so suddenly, but couldn't shake feeling worried about Callie. Plagued about a sense of un unease, she spent the whole trip on her phone, searching for some clues, searching for some clues as to Callie's whereabouts. Her efforts failed to turn up anything to calm her fears. When she arrived in, in, in Inkopolis, Marie headed straight for their apartment. The place looked exactly as she'd left it. In fact, there was no sign, of, there was no sign Callie had been at home at all since Marie left for her trip. But if she hadn't come home, where could she have gone? After giving it some thought, 
Marie got an idea and hurried out of the apartment. So, pretty interesting chapters, I have to say, honestly. I mean, um, these chapters right here do pretty much cover uh, what, how Kelly and Marie are, like, or kind of like how they were, like, during, after, like, the final Splatfest back in Splatoon 1. So, yeah, like I said, these are pretty interesting chapters right here. And I really can't wait to see what you guys think of these chapters right here. And do you guys think that Callie Marie would make it in Splatoon? Or do they still have a chance for Splatoon 2? Well, we probably might find out when Splatoon 2 releases for the Nintendo Switch, July 21st. And with that, folks, that is going to wrap it up for, the, for our Splatoon 2 Squid Sister stories. So, if you guys like the video, make sure to always like, comment, and subscribe on my stuff if you want to see more Splatoon videos in the near future on my channel. And if you guys if you guys like this, and if there are any more chapters that come out for the Splatoon 2 Squid Sister stories, I'll make sure to cover more of those chapters in the near future on my channel once they get released. If they even do get released, so... Yeah, just in case about that, just make sure to always like, comment, and subscribe on my stuff. And if you guys, and like I said, if you guys like this, and, there, and like I said, if there are more chapters that come out, I'll make sure to cover them in the next possible video for this for the Squid Sister stories. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me here. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. And stay fresh, everybody. Peace!